Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster, and today I am so excited to be bringing you a video all about making tags for the holidays. So I'm going to be showing you three different styles of tags, and we'll be making nine all together. First featuring our creative dies, then featuring some stamping techniques with our brush stroke stamps, and then some whimsical fun tags. So we'll go ahead and get started, and first I will show you three tags featuring our creative dies. Now, when I am making tags or even cards with creative dies, I like to go ahead and first just do lots and lots of die cutting. So I cut my tags using our creative die tagged, and I cut them from watercolor paper and some from Bristol smooth paper, and I just put them in envelopes and label them, and then I have all the tags ready to go for my projects. Now I am going to be doing some painting using Distress Reinkers used as watercolors. So I'm just putting them into like a cheap palette. I think I got it at Target or Walmart. And I am going to paint some pieces of watercolor paper which are roughly cut to the size of my plates of my die cutting machine. And I did a video um, a while ago showing a lot of mass producing cards using this technique and I'm just doing this again for these tags. So I've just given myself a very limited palette with my favorite Christmas colors, a nice bold red, some blues, a turquoise, and some green. And I like to do this because I feel like the variation that the color here gets using the watercolors as opposed to just colored cardstock just adds a lot to the finished cards or the finished tags. But you could certainly just pull out your favorite colors of cardstock and do the same technique with it. And I'm just painting each of these and then I'm setting them to the side to dry and then I will use these papers to cut my die cuts from. I also am going to put a little paint on some of the tags and just have those ready to go too. So sort of just working in batches or assembly line style for each step of the way. While the paints are out, I'll do the painting. And I do a couple of different color variations, but using that same very limited palette. Now all of the supplies I'm using, including the exact colors that I'm using, all of the penny black stamps and dies and every papers, everything will be listed for you down in the YouTube description box below. So if you wanna see what colors I'm using exactly listed out, that will be down there for you. And you can see here, I'm just painting up another tag, just doing all of this, not having to make any decisions, but just enjoying the fun of painting. Then what I do is I take all of those pre-painted watercolor papers, and then I just run my die cuts through, just sit and die cut, die cut, die cut, die cut, lots and lots of different die cuts. And then I store my die cuts the metal dies along with the pieces that I've cut just in a regular envelope and then I can pull all those out to put the tags together. So the first uh, die that I'm featuring is 51-749 on a limb. I love this die because it can be used for holiday cards, Christmas, but also you can use it into the winter months for lots of occasions, birthday, thinking of you. You could even add flowers or leaves to the tree die and use it for other seasons. So it's really versatile. Now here I have this little bird. I die cut that from the blue cardstock. And what I'm doing now is I'm just getting a water-based marker. These are Atezza Twi markers, but you could use any. You could even just grab your watercolor paints and adding a little bit more detail here on the bird. So I just colored with the marker on there and then blended it with water. Here I'm just coloring right onto his legs and blending that a little bit with some water. I actually end up trimming off the legs so he looks like he's nestled more on the branch, but just thought I'd show that. And some beak and a little eye for him. I'm going to grab some Distress inks and my ink blending tool, the foam pad, and I'm just going to ink over some of that watercolor on that tag that just sort of unifies it and again just adds even more depth and dimension but it's easy to do because now I have all my ink set up and all of the painting is complete. So I'm ready to assemble. I'm just using some liquid adhesive onto this tree branch and tree and I'm going to just put that right on my tag. And I really love making holiday tags. So if you are finished with all your Christmas cards, it's a great time to get out your 
products, your stamps, your dies, and get even more use out of them to make some tags. You can just write your to and from on the back or you could make a hinge tag, so cut two of them and score the top of the one in the back and put your adhesive above and hinge them together and write your message on the inside. If you don't plan to make Christmas cards or you run out of time, you can always make these handmade gift tags. I think they add so much. And you can even add them to just very simple gift bags or gift wrapping and it just elevates the whole look and makes it feel all handmade. It's also just kind of a fun holiday thing to do. If you're looking to get in the holiday mood, you can turn on a Christmas movie or Christmas show and just crank away at your tags. So to finish off this, I just trimmed a little piece of white as a snow bank there down at the bottom and added some pearls and the sentiment. All of the sentiments on all of the tags are from our Jolly Snippets set and I'll list and link that down below. Now I also wanted to show you just a peek here at a card featuring this same die set just so you can see how it can be used for a tag or a card or both, whatever you're looking to do. Next up we'll use 51-750 Let's Skate. Again, um, I'm going to combine this with 51-751 Winter Stems. And again, like I was saying, I love about these particular dies is that you can absolutely use them for Christmas, for holidays, but you can take them into the new year, into the winter months and continue to use them. I'm adding just a little bit of marker detail onto these dies so you could see on the berries I just darkened up the sort of stems on those and on the ice skate all I'm going to do is color with some black and color with some gray and that will just finish off these beautiful white ice skates along with a little inking along the edges to give them sort of a vintage feel to go with sort of the backgrounds that I've created for the tags. Now these skates dies do have a little sort of a lace hanging from the top so they could look like they're hanging down on your card but I just trim that off and then you can use them individually and what I like to do then is to sort of fill them with these winter stems just to give them a new look and make them look extra festive. Now I pulled those winter stems from the envelope and I put a little distress ink on top and I'm doing the same thing here on this tag starting off of the edge and working my way on in a circular motion. And you can see here, I've just went ahead and popped up those skates onto the tag using some foam squares. And then I'm just going to start sticking in some of these branches in here and filling those up. You can trim apart those winter branches and those berries to make them fit your project, which is what I've done here. And the tag is complete. And so here is a look at that finished tag. I did add a few self-adhesive pearls just for fun, but oh man, I really love how this one turned out. It's one of my favorites. And then here is a card featuring that same creative die just to give you some ideas on how you can use it on a card. Here again are those winter stems, 51-751. And again, really super versatile. So what I've done now is just pulled out a bunch of those winter stems and I'm gonna create sort of a bundle on the front of this tag. I'm darkening up the edges here with a little bit of Gathered Twigs Distress Ink and then I'll just darken up these die cuts just more towards the center and the base to give them some extra dimension and sort of some shading on there. The combination of that watercoloring plus a little bit of inking on top just adds so much. And I just laid them across my tag, added a twine bow and self-adhesive pearl on there and it is complete. And I just think that's so simple and so pretty on top of any gift package or gift bag. It would really add a lot. And then again, here is a card idea featuring that same winter stems, a very clean and simple card with just one of those going across the center. Now we will do some tags featuring some brush stroke stamping. And these are really fun to do. And for these particular tags, I have cut them using Bristol Smooth paper. And I find that this works really well with our brush stroke stamp. So all of the other tags were cut from Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. Except for these, they're from Bristol Smooth paper. And I'm gonna start with Berry Beauty. And I'm going to stamp this in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. And what this allows me to do is to do multiple stampings to darken the color and also to work section by section. So I am just putting some different greens onto those leaves and I'm going to 
stamp that a couple of times just to darken it up. And what's great then about stamping this onto that Bristol Smooth paper is I can grab a paintbrush and all that's on here is some water and I can just blend this out and it looks like this really loose watercolor look. Now when I finish with this tag I'll show you a couple of cards and one of them I'll show you where I didn't go back and do any of the blending and then of course this one you can see where I'm go going back in and blending with some water. So you don't have to watercolor with these but it is kind of fun. I'm even going to press down my Distress ink pad just right there on my Misty tool and then pick up some of that with my paintbrush just to add some darker shadows in there. And working on the tag shape is really nice. It's not too large of a project and you can have fun with different ways that you turn the stamp to get a whole different look to your tags. Once I'm done with those leaves, I will move on to the berries. And I wanted some of these to have a yellowish golden look. So I'm actually going to first just stamp them all in a yellowish gold colors. All of the colors I'm using again are listed down in the YouTube description box below. And I've divided out the supply listings by all of the um, supplies used on the cards featuring creative dyes and then all of the ones for the tags featuring brush stroke stamping. So it should be easy for you to find if there's a particular um, set of tags that you like. Now I'm going in and just adding some red onto some of the berries I'm using an Arteza Twi marker. You can use any of your water-based markers to do this. So like your Zig markers, your Tombow Dual Brush pens, the Arteza Twi markers, they all work well for that. And then I'm just going to blend that out with a little bit of water. Now when I get the water on my paintbrush, I dip my paintbrush in water and then you'll see I have just in the corner there a paper towel and I just pat off my paintbrush with on that paper towel before I bring it to my paper that way it isn't too wet and I don't get like a big blob of water. Now I'll just grab a brown marker to add in those stems and that detail on there and this tag is nearly complete. I decided I wanted to just darken up a few of these leaves a little bit more so I put some of that Distress Ink pad right onto my misty door there and painted that in. And again the sentiment was stamped from the Jolly Snippet set. It is so perfect for tag making. And then here is that same stamp used on a couple of cards. So similar techniques for these cards. That one has some water blending it out and here's the one where it's just inked with ink pads no water involved. For our next tag we're going to use 40-878 Mary Berries and I wanted to go with a really vintage look for this particular tag so I'm going to ink up my stamp using a Gathered Twigs Mini Distress Ink. The mini size works really well for putting that ink onto these stamps and then it is water soluble. That's what allows you to go back and blend it. Or in this case I'm actually going to mist it. And then I will stamp it down and you'll get that beautiful watercolor look. Now I obviously did not clean my stamp very well <laughs> from the last time I used it. So there must have been a little bit of red left on those berries so when I misted it it reactivated that ink. But that is no problem. So I'm just going in here now and blending that out. And I really love how this turned out with that brown for the leaves instead of the green. So I will show you a couple cards at the end that show it with some different greens, but I love how that turned out. Now I've used another Distress Ink mini ink pad. I kind of turned it on its side so I got the ink on the berries primarily. Ink those up and then now I'm also going in with my Arteza Twi marker to color directly onto the stamp and then stamp it down and you can see that really captured a lot of that color. And then I'm just going to slightly just barely go over these to give them that loose flowing look to match the leaves in the background. And I'm going to dry that because I'm going to add a little bit more brown just to darken up some of these areas. It also will co cover any of the spots where the red sort of blended out onto the leaves. So I'll get the stem here with my marker directly to the stamp and then I actually have that palette 
from those other die cut cards handy and I'm just going to pull up some of the gathered twigs distress ink reinker and just paint it on a few leaves here and there or in any places where the red sort of blended over into the leaf that will just cover it up and I think this just adds so much dimension just to add a little bit of this here and there it really brings it to life So I'd love to find out, what do you think? Do you like the brown leaves, sort of that vintage look, or do you prefer your traditional reds and greens for the holidays and for your stamping with stamps like these? Leave me a comment down, um, down below. I would love to hear what you think. But here is the finished tag stamped with the Jolly Snippets sentiment on there. And then here are a couple of cards featuring that same stamp. So just to give you some ideas of how you can use it on a card as well. And here's one where it was just done with ink pads, no watercoloring required at all. For the last brush, last brush stroke stamp, we're going to use 40-875 Treasured Pine. I'm working on that Bristol smooth paper that was die cut using our tagged creative die and I'm inking up my stamp using Distress inks. I just did the pine needles and I'm just very lightly blending some of that. I just wanted to have some all over color behind those pine needles so I can just blend that out. And you can see how easy that is to do with the Distress inks on that Bristol paper. Now while it's still wet, I'm going to ink up that stamp again with a darker green and it will start to blend and bleed out just a little bit. It's really beautiful. So I'm going to dry that. So I liked the little bit of blending and bleeding that it did, but I'm going to dry it to sort of stop that process. And then here I'm going to put on the Gather Twigs Distress Ink onto the pine cone. And I'm going to stamp it a couple of times just to darken it up. And then I can go in and blend that so sorry about my head there <laughs> and I can just blend some of that out to give it more of a loose watercolor look this stamp is really versatile I found I used it a lot just sometimes for those pine needles they're a nice little touch onto holiday cards or gift tags and you could change the look of this gift tag just by changing the way that you position the stamp onto the tag itself I'm grabbing a little bit of that Gathered Twigs Distress Ink Reinker and using it as a watercolor just to add some few darker areas in here to really give that uh, the look like it's going up under that pine cone to add that shadow in there. And there's very little water on my brush. I'm just patting it off on that paper towel before I bring it to my paper. And then I'll grab my toy marker and color on just here for the stem area or branch to get that detail. And I can blend it with a little water and I stamped my sentiment and that tag is complete. And then here is a couple of cards featuring that same stamp and similar technique on this one with stamping and then adding some water coloring. And then this next card features it just with ink pads stamped onto the paper without any watercoloring required. So for my last three tags, and I hope you're still hanging out with me here and don't mind this long video, I'm going to do some whimsical watercoloring. And so I'm going to use these three stamps. These are illustrated by a very talented illustrator, Ann Keenan Higgins. And um, I'll put a link for her Instagram down in the YouTube description box below. You'll be so inspired after you see her Instagram. But I love these stamps and I think they're really fun for gift tags because sometimes it's not, I'm looking for a gift tag for somebody younger or for a girlfriend and I think these are so perfect for gift tags and cards of course too. So I'm stamping onto that Canson 140 pound watercolor paper, but I am stamping these using VersaFine ink in the color of, let me look here, probably hear me digging around, smoky gray. And I think this gives sort of a sketchy look, like these were just sketched out onto these tags. 
and I like that with these particular style of stamps but I do grab a waterproof marker this is a Faber Castell pit artist pen with a fine small tip uh, for journaling and I like to just darken up the eye area or the glasses in this case and I'm going to paint these using my Secura Koi Field Sketchbox watercolors. You can, you could color them in with whatever you have on hand, whatever you prefer. You could use colored pencils. You could continue to use those Distress Ink reinkers used as watercolors. But I just grabbed these. It's a handy set. You could stamp a bunch of these tags, and I like these watercolors because you can have every color you could need just in this little set so you could take it with you you could be watching your Christmas movie or um, take it with you somewhere else in the house and be able to paint a whole bunch of tags so you can work sort of assembly line style like I did with these where I did all of the stamping and then I can do all of the painting what's fun about painting these in is that because of the sketchy look of the illustration your watercoloring does not or your pencil coloring or Copic markers whatever you you're doing does not have to be precise and it does not have to take very long and it will just add to that whimsical look sort of storybook look of the illustration As you can see I just painted in her cute little jacket adding a little color here to her skin and some rosy cheeks and I just think these make the cutest, just so fun for gift tags. And they're really fun to be painting. They're such happy, whimsical images. I just think it's just nice to mix it up sometimes. And these are really great for that. So I'm just adding a little color in here for your hair. But you can see it's nothing too precise. I'm just gonna quickly, you know, swipe that paintbrush across the wreath. If I don't color in all of it or there's some white, I think that just adds to it. Now on all of these tags, I did go back afterward and add a little inking around the outside edge of them. I can't remember if I show that or not, but I did add a little inking with the ink blending tool and a foam pad just to give them sort of that um, aged look or that light tan look around the edges. And I painted them all in the same way, just a very quick, easy watercolor. For example, in the center of these flowers, you can see I'm just adding little dabs of yellow. Nothing... Um, complicated at all. <laughs> oh yep, here I did show it. So I'm just starting off the edge and working my way on in a circular motion, kind of avoiding the image itself, but adding a little bit of that. And I think that just gives them a really nice finished look. And so yep, I painted the other two just using the same painting techniques and the same colors. I think it's kind of fun to limit the color palette. It also limits the number of decisions you're making if you sort of limit yourself to a specific color palette. So here is a look at these finished tags, sentiments from Jolly Snippets, and then some card ideas. So here's a card featuring that same stamp. And here is the one that you saw me painting. And you'll see at the top of these, those reinforcers around the whole of the tag, that is also part of our created die set tagged. So you can have some fun with those too. You can even switch up the colors to match what you've painted. And then this little house. I love this and I think that stay cozy is such a fun sentiment. I think that'd be a fun gift tag to if you're giving someone some Christmas holiday decor. That would be a fun one to use with that and a card idea. So here, if you made it all the way to the end, here is a look at all nine tags that I created. I think I did all of these start to finish in a you know with like cutting everything coloring everything I think it took me in real life about three hours or so so it really goes pretty fast especially wherever you can if you can sort of work in batches but it's really fun a great way to get some extra use out of your holiday stamps and dies 
If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website and blog, and links for all of those are down in the description box below. Happy stamping!